Hello, everybody, and thanks for coming. Uh, so uh, today, uh, I wanted to talk about uh, uh, automating uh, very tedious uh, and error-prone things uh, in uh, releasing new uh, PyPI packages. Uh, so some background first. Uh, I've been contributing to open source uh, for uh, 20, 21 years now. And uh, over the years, uh, I've uh, accumulated a number of projects that uh, I'm either the author or maintainer of. Uh, and during that time, uh, I've learned by, uh, I learned the hard way uh, what can go wrong in the release process. Uh, if I can just show you. I'm sure uh, there are people with far more many uh, far more projects uh, that they maintain, but uh, even a subset of this, if they are very active, uh, can take this toll. So the the problem with releasing new stuff is. Uh, when you do packaging, uh, a lot of things can go wrong. Like, uh, for example, uh, you might miss some files uh, in manifest, or you might forget to tag your release uh, in Git, or uh, all sorts of things can go wrong, and uh, they are really hard to fix uh, afterwards. But uh, even then, uh, you would really like to uh, automate the process for, uh, in order to speed it up. Because uh, if the maintainer feels that the release process is, uh, is troublesome, then uh, the maintainer is also far less likely to, to uh, make frequent releases. So uh, when I was struggling with these problems, uh, I set out to figure out uh, what, what I can do to improve the state of things. So I came up uh, with a process that involves a few select tools. And uh, the last piece of the puzzle actually uh, became available last year. I'll talk about it later. But uh, if you have ever released anything, you may remember that you need to uh, at the very minimum, you need to uh, run PyPI, uh, Python setup.py, uh, sdist, bdist wheel, and then twine upload. Okay? Uh, but you also should tag your releases and you should uh, amend your change logs and whatnot. So uh, some of that can be automated. And uh, I will show you what uh, I have done to do that. So the process goes as follows. First, you make a tag. You push it to GitHub or whatever, wherever. And uh, then GitHub uh, notifies Travis that there is a new tag. And then Travis starts uh, the build process. And uh, assuming everything goes well, uh, Travis then automatically uh, uploads the packages to PyPI. So how do we make this happen? The first piece of the puzzle is <laughs> set up tools SCM. Are you telling why it's in process? <laughs> what? It, it looks like you are telling my process because I do the same. Right. I just check. <laughs> well, it's good to hear. Uh, it kind of validates it. <laughs> so, uh, what set up tools SCM does is. Uh, it's actually two things. First of all, uh, it eliminates the need for a manifest.in. Uh, 
If you don't happen to know, manifest.in uh, is a file required by setup tools uh, which tells which files to package into the source distribution. Well, uh, with setup tools SCM, uh, you don't really need that anymore because it just uh, takes a look at what you have in the repository and uh, then just packages the same files in there. So uh, that eliminates one vector of errors. Uh, and the second one is uh, automatic versioning based on uh, Git tags. So uh, this way you will have to add a Git tag every time you make a new release. <coughs> Uh, and the version number is only in one location, which is in the Git repository. If, for any reason, you want to have this Dunder version variable, uh, there is a way to do that. Uh, Setup Tools SCM has uh, instructions in its documentation for that. Uh, the the bonus feature uh, is also that uh, if you make additional commits then it automatically increments the version, uh, which is configurable. Uh, I don't like the defaults. Uh, I configured it to add a post suffix, like a post one, post two, post three, and so forth. Uh, there are a lot of configuration options here that you can use to tweak it to your liking. Now, the second piece of the puzzle is a feature of Travis called build stages. Uh, it was actually launched uh, as far back as last year, uh, but nine days ago uh, it went uh, from beta to an official feature. So uh, the point here is that uh, you have uh, separate stages where uh, all the jobs in a single stage run concurrently, and uh, only when all the jobs have finished will it launch the next stage. So. Uh, what you can do with this is uh, you can make the deploy stage the last one to ensure that uh, all of the uh, actual test jobs succeed first. Uh, Travis has had a PyPI deploy feature for a long time where uh, after the build it will upload, uh, if it will package uh, the project and upload it to PyPI. The trouble was that uh, uh, if you, if you did that uh, without any extra configuration, it, it will just, uh, <laughs> um, well, assuming you have uh, multiple Python versions uh, as jobs, it will then uh, try to upload uh, this, uh, the packages uh, in all the jobs. And even if you restricted that, uh, it could happen that uh, the build fails for some Python version, but not the one where you have the deploy uh, configured so you would end up with a pro broken release. Now, build stages fixes that. Also, uh, I'd like to uh, mention that uh, sometimes you need experimental builds, like uh, I think Pip has a build job on Python Nightly. Uh, you can configure it to uh, be <coughs> so that you, uh, you cannot be, be allowed to fail. Uh, so that uh, it doesn't really, really prevent you from uh, releasing. But it's nice to know if, uh, if it runs on nightly or not. All right. Now, I would like to do a sort of practical uh, exercise here, assuming internet works and nothing goes wrong. <laughs> um, let's build a trivial project uh, and uh, get this to upload to test PyPI. Uh, test PyPI, if you don't know, is a parallel site to PyPI. It's a sort of a sandbox site. You don't want to upload uh, these kind of uh, rubbish things uh, on the real PyPI. So uh, in the first phase, we will uh, create a new project on GitHub.
start the project. I checked beforehand and this this project shouldn't be taken this name shouldn't be taken on test pipe PI. Yeah, um, this is something that is required. Uh, I was actually supposed to talk about it. Hang on. Sorry, technical difficulties. Yes. So what we are going to do uh, is after we have uh, checked out the project on GitHub, uh, we will add the code and uh, test. Uh, then we will add the metadata and uh, packaging configuration, that is setup.py and setup.cfg. Then uh, we will add uh, configuration for tox and pytest. And finally, the Travis configuration. Uh, so the requirements for this is that, of course, you need a GitHub account, obviously. and. Uh, this is something that has changed recently. Uh, Travis uh, is now migrating for Travis, uh, is it travisci.org uh, to travisci.com. Uh, it causes some difficulties and the process has changed a little bit, uh, but it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, in addition to that, you will need uh, the Travis command line tool installed it's a Ruby thing, and uh, you need to run Travis login uh, just once. I've never had to do it twice. But uh, all in due time, uh, let's first check out, create and check out the project. Okay. Get cloned. Yes, that was the intention. Now let me just uh, open it in the editor. I think it's a high DPI mode. But we'll make do. There we go. Now, uh, the next phase. Is the packaging configuration. Uh, for now, at least, uh, setup.py is always required. 
It may change at some point, uh, depending on who you are asking. But um, yes, uh, it's a requirement. But uh, the thing is, uh, my personal favorite uh, in a way uh, to configure the metadata is to use setup.cfg, which is a setup tools feature uh, that was fairly recently introduced. And uh, that is what we are going to do now. But before that, uh, we'll create some code. Yes. Yes, we should configure a Python interpreter for this. Let's... Um Let's use Pippen. Okay. Something like this. And then we need a test for it. Okay. A trivial test for this. Um, Now we have a package and a test for it. Um, one side note before we continue. There's also a file called pyproject.toml that uh, you may or may not need, but uh, uh, in this case, I just that it was not necessary, really. Uh, it may only be necessary if, uh, if you don't have the required uh, minimum version of setup tools, but uh, other than that, it's not really necessary. And besides, it only works for PIP uh, 10 onwards. 
so let's go write those uh, set.py and set.cfg now. And now we need to use setup tools SCM here. Oh, what was the keyword? I have to look up another project. Right. These are sometimes hard to remember. And you also need to make sure that uh, it's in the setup requirements. So Like this. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Actually, um, most setup the pi files are not this uh, not this short, uh, but that's because we are adding the metadata to setup.cft instead. Okay, um, in addition to the metadata, we need uh, some setup tools options. If you're wondering about this syntax, uh, it's, special, uh, it's a special directive that tells uh, setup tools to find any packages in the root directory. Um, also, uh, since we will be having tests, uh, we will need something to run the tests, for which we will be using uh, PyTest and Docs, as mentioned before. Uh, some projects uh, add some kind of uh, dev requirements.txt or whatever. Uh, my way is to add all the, re uh, the requirements as extras. We'll just use uh, PyTest for now. Okay, I think that's the bare minimum. Uh, we still don't have a readme, but it's not, uh, not necessary for this demonstration. But uh, if you publish anything in a PyPI, make sure you have a readme.
Now we will need a tox in it. Let's say we want to test on Python 3.6 and 3.7. And we want to be running PyTest. Uh, the last part is uh, just summing uh, a placeholder than uh, where the positional arguments are put if you add any to talks arguments. And uh, in order to make Tox install the uh, test XRS uh, requirement, you will want this. Okay. Let's see how horribly wrong it goes. Right. Uh, this happens because uh, I don't really have a Git repository here yet. So Setup Tools SCM needs a Git repository and at least one commit in order to determine a version. So let's add one. We want to add almost all the files here. Okay, let's see what happens now. I will get to that later, but uh, I'm really new to Pipenv actually, and uh, I don't feel that uh, it's the the point seems to be with uh, Pipenv is to pin all the dependencies which you don't want in an open source library, right? Someone could point out that I'm wrong, but uh, We'll talk about it later. Uh, for now, we don't need it. All right. We have a failed test. Bad is different. Hmm? Bad is different. It's missing. Yes. So this was intentional, believe, me, believe it or not. <laughs> 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 yeah. Because uh, the best way to validate uh, your test suit is to have it fail at first. Really. So we will add this.
and uh, now we have passing tests, so it's all good. Now we just have to we can just amend the first commit. Okay, um, now we have the bare minimum, I think, to put it to the test by PI. So, uh, before we do that, uh, we need a Travis configuration. So, for that to happen, uh, it's easiest to just copy your Travis configuration from another project. That's what I do. Yeah. Uh, there's a thing called uh, Travis, uh, um, Travis uh, Setup PyPI. Uh, it adds some bare minimum configuration to your Travis configuration, but uh, in my opinion, it just uh, it just condenses everything and makes it pretty unreadable. So, what I'm going to do here is uh, run that very command, but only get the encrypted password from there. Uh, that's the only thing you really need to change in addition to the repository name. So what I'm doing here is I'm copying the Travis configuration from the wheel project. We don't need code at this point or notifications. Okay, so there are two things that need to be changed here. First is the repository name. Uh, and uh, the PyPI password. Uh, for the PyPI password, I'm going to, oh. I'm going to run the Travis setup thing. All right, so it's here. Don't use dash dash pro because it breaks things as well. Okay, do I put it uh, before or after uh, setup? Uh, anywhere. Okay. I think. I, I think you might need to authorize it against uh, this endpoint as well. To hmm. do the login again first. You know, uh, I rehearsed this uh, before and uh, it worked just fine. The com. Oh, okay. 
I created a new repository today, and it works just fine. Uh, yeah, the trouble is that. Uh, Yeah, I'm sorry for the trouble. This did work earlier today. <laughs> it's a famous demo effect. Okay, it worked now. So the only thing we... Yeah. But uh, things are in a flux at Travis, so uh, I'm not really surprised by anything. Did you change anything? Nope. I just logged in again. Okay, now we have a Travis configuration here. Let's hope we have time to see the process to the end. Okay, now let's see what happens if we push. Uh, we need to tag it first. Oh. No, you should commit first. I did. You did, did git add. Yeah, and then I committed via the GUI. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's one more thing that we need to change. Because uh, We don't, uh, we don't want to pollute the actual PyPI. Oh, that's what it's going to test that. Yes. Now we will add the git tag. And push. Now let's go and see what happens.
assuming it works. Are you sure? In the URL. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Right. There were a few Python versions that we really didn't need. happened here is uh, yes Yeah, we needed uh, 3.6 and 3.7, nothing else. Yeah, we are uh, running out of time, so uh, we don't have time to wait for the uh, any bills to complete. So let me just explain how this works. So we have two stages, test and deploy to PyPI. Uh, this last stage is only activated if, uh, if there's a tag incoming. And uh, this is a regular expression that should match the tag. Uh, in this case, it's a major dot uh, minor dot patch version. You can actually open some uh, other project which just has this interface. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry, Alex. As yeah. a certain chair, I have the control tie, and uh, yeah, your tie okay. is up. And uh, even though some problem happened, we still have some, give some welcome to Alex again. Thank you. Yeah. 